Hello. What ho, TGB? It's Hugo. Hugo, how are you? Well, I'm in a spot of bother. I'm so sorry to hear that. So, what is the matter? Can you repeat that? I, I simply can't understand your slightly chavvy accent, darling. I said, I'm sorry to hear that. But what is the matter? We didn't all go to Eton, you know. I went to Harrow, not Eton. Eton is frightfully common. Well, it turns out that I'm wanted by the Swedish mafia. I wasn't even aware there was a Swedish mafia. Yes, well, even did I. They want that fifty grand back for the、um, Daniel Duke of Wellington watch review. Right. So what did you do with all that money? Well, I bought lots of goats, didn't I? Absolutely delish. Listen, darling, I'm going to have to lay low for a while. Can you stop calling me darling, please? Have a good Christmas and all of that、um, human stuff. Anyway, mustache Eastenders is on. Where are you going to go? Actually, you know what? Don't tell me. I. I I don't want to know. I'll see you next year, I guess. Toodle pip. Okay, take care. Ciao, 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 ciao. Ha! <laughs> Bloody peasant. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show today. A quick disclaimer before I get started:、um, you might hear a whirring sound in the background. I have no idea if the the mic here is the mic actually in frame. No, it's not. Thank God for that.、Um, yeah, you might hear a whirring sound. It sounds like I'm in the Starship Enterprise.、Uh, it's incredibly cold today, so I have the Heating on full blast,、uh, but the benefit is I get to wear my <laughs> my jackets in a turtleneck. So,、uh, without further ado, wristwatch check. Yeah, and I'm、uh, I wasn't even gonna wear it today, but I'm too excited. So yeah, my little AP, the Zenny, the Zen dial. I'm still absolutely enamored over the moon. And you know, I was planning to wear the Stover today and save this for Christmas. You know what? Life is too short. And a lot of people, just as I predicted, a lot of people got their knickers in a twist. And, oh, how could you buy a quartz? Oh, all of that stuff.、Um, but you know what? I said twice in the video, I'm still going to buy the automatic next year. So、um, I might as well just enjoy this absolutely splendid thing. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. So、uh, what am I going to discuss today? Well, I thought I would share with you my top twenty. Misconceptions and deceptions I see all the time on YouTube, Instagram, basically social media when it comes to watches. Okay, number one is the price of watches. As you guys know, if when I review a watch, I'm going to talk about value. There are some watches, in my opinion, that are vastly overpriced. If you remember the quite recent IWC video, you know, I see comments all the time. Oh, I wouldn't pay five hundred dollars for this watch that has a Miyota movement. Blah 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 blah. blah. Guys, never forget, and I've li- I've listed just the quick things off the top of my head. Some of the hidden costs when it goes into producing a watch. The materials, the transportation, the promotion, the packaging, the actual production costs, the investment in infrastructure, quality control, rent, the wages of the of the watchmakers, the upkeep costs, taxes, logistics, legal fees. Oh, and not forgetting,、uh, you know, God forbid, a company makes a little bit of profit on top. So, guys, never forget. And this is just only a f- few I could think of off, off the top of my head. The prices involved in making a watch. I think a lot of people don't realise these things until they've gone to factories, until they've seen just what goes into making even the most rudimentary affordable watch. Fantastic.、Um, Ooh, I wouldn't mind a bit of that. Okay, number two, cheap watches. Cheap watches. I, I, I yeah, it's a derogatory term, but affordable watches. Do not hold their values. This is absolute hogwash. Now, I'm not saying all affordable watches hold their value. 
Just like in, some luxury watches don't, some affordable watches don't. But look at some rarer swatches that have absolutely skyrocketed, uh, highly collectible, discontinued models from Seiko, domestic models. Some of the old Alpinists, for example, uh, are, are very rare and sought after. If my channel has proved anything, it is that there are some amazing affordable watches that certainly can um, hold their value. And, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not about that. Um, for me, watches are for enjoyment. But... Anyway, I had to address it. Number three, watch size. Yes, you've got to buy watches that are relevant to your size, that fit your wrist. Who cares what people think? You know, I certainly don't. I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have an extremely thick skin, so I don't care, you know. I'll wear a 33 millimeter super thin AP Royal Oak and enjoy it. Some people can't, or actually physically can't. If you're large wristed, wear big watches. And also don't be afraid to wear women's watches. I, I, I came so close to buying the ladies, uh, I know some of you laugh, but the ladies 36 millimeter Oris Aquis. Okay, so I'm not gonna wear something that's bright pink with diamonds that's obviously very effeminate. There's nothing wrong with the 36 millimeter Aquis. It's mere marketing, really, you know, if you think about it. Guys, look back at old pictures of Clark Gable wearing a 28 millimeter uh, Oyster Perpetual Rolex. So buy what makes you happy. Brand new today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him um, if you have a fashionista in your home. Yes, oh my God. Number four, not every brand wants to be reviewed. Uh, I get a lot of comments, people saying, what about Zodiac? What about this brand? What about Alpina? What about, uh, I have some more, Rado is another one. I'm dying to review those watches, but those brands simply do not lend out their watches for review for whatever reason. Some brands simply don't want any criticism of their timepieces, and it's their prerogative. I try to be as fair as I can um, I would never bash a watch, but at the same time, if there is something lacking, is if there is, for example, an issue with the crown or a, a quality control issue, I mean, think back with the Trintec review. You know, I said they, it's a shame. If they address these quality control issues, they have a cracking watch. And you know what this really does mean is the watches that brands directly do lend in, got to give them a little bit more respect, uh, like uh, Christopher Ward, for example. I was very critical of that watch, even though I love the new GMT. I think it's one of the best Swiss automatic GMTs under $1,000. That's my opinion, right? But there were some things I didn't like about it, and I said it, and they earned my respect because they're willing to, to engage, especially with social media, when so many brands are not. It's, it's a sad state of affairs, but anyway. Pure class. Number five, not all Chinese manufacturing is uh, the same, okay? Uh, there's a big stigma with made in China that it's badly made. I think it's really unfair how some people just paint the whole country with the same brush just because merely of the products at the bottom of the spectrum, so to speak. There's some really high-end Chinese manufacturers that rival the Swiss. They really do. There's a vast differing array of, of levels. So, like I said in the Daniel Wellington review, some of my favorite micro brands are, are made in China. And I, I really respect, especially when the brands are open and transparent about it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with, with watches made in China. Well, the good ones, that is. sub down here will ignite when you press the... Ignite. Button. Ignite. Will <laughs> Number six, not all watch dealers are born equal. Some are merely in this business for profit. They don't care about their customers. And it's a real shame because it reflects badly on, on the good ones. I'm extremely selective on who I recommend. I did do a seven, uh, my top seven li uh, sellers list video. I'll, I'll leave a link. Do check it out. There's no financial incentives to, to recommend them other than the fact that I know you are in safe hands and trust me, I've met some absolute sharks. Uh, in fact, I don't even like calling them sharks because, <laughs> because the shark is such an ancient, noble creature. There's so many risks involved. I mean, you really have to be such an expert and I would never be a watch dealer. It's far too risky. And I know some of you say, well, well, you, you sell some of your watches on eBay. Guys, 
I'm a personal collector. Of course I sell some of my watches. Maybe once a month I'll sell a watch on eBay and it's to fund another watch. These are from my personal collection. I'm not a, a dealer. That's not patina. That's rust. What a rip off. Big, big one here. And that is calling watches excrement, okay? There is only truly one type of watch that is excrement and that is fake watches, okay? Going online, uh, commenting and, or, or in videos and saying, you know, calling another person's watch excrement is so classless. It reeks of insecurity. Jungle is massive. Oh my God, number eight. This is a massive pet peeve of mine. And that is people that review, review, or talk about watches they've never held in their hand or ever seen, ever. How can you review that? It's just madness. It's insane. I would never talk about a watch I've never seen in the flesh because why? Well, perceptions change. I've had watches that I thought I loved, saw them in the flesh and was bitterly disappointed. The reverse has happened. <laughs> you know, I've seen watches I thought, uh, and then I got them in the hand and I just fell in love. It happens. You cannot trust the opinion of anyone who reviews or talks about a watch. They've never, ever, what's the expression? Um, seen in the metal, right? <laughs> okay, number nine, um, it's impossible to tell uh, a real from a high-end fake. This is absolute hogwash, yes maybe in appearance at first glance, they can be almost identical. They can weigh the same, they can have the same quality materials. Well, that's even that's up for debate, but there's always gonna be telltale signs. Take it to a watch dealer, not a watch dealer. <laughs> Take it to a watchmaker, open that thing up. There will always be a giveaway somewhere in there, somewhere in there. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was the most powerful dinosaur before prehistoric period. Okay, number 10, wearing watches on your right. Guys, there's no right or wrong about how you wear your watches. Yes, most people wear it on this side, on their left. Never forget that back at the turn of the century when people first started wearing watches on the wrist as opposed to on a chain and fob, the pocket watch, it was only women wearing wristwatches and it was seen as very effeminate and it was seen as ungentlemanly even, you know, and, and until the trend kind of took on, right? There are even watches like we've seen with the crown on the opposite side that are, are designed for the opposite wrist. There's no right or wrong, okay? Do what makes you happy, do what's comfortable for you. Um, for some reason, I still see these comments popping up. It's like, oh, that's, that's not correct. Where was it written? Was it in, in Debrett's etiquette guide? No, it isn't. So, so yeah, where, however you want and whatever makes you happy. Okay, number 11, mispronouncing brand names. I'm guilty of this. I do it all the time. It's going to happen. It's especially with the Swiss brands because uh, for example, when I went to the JLC, and I'm saying JLC to escape, <laughs> um, even the people at JLC can decide. Some people, w w whether they come from a German background, pronounced Jaeger one way, others Jaeger, you know. Guys, the important thing is here to never to correct another person's pronunciation, especially publicly. It's really bad manners to do so. And the bad thing about that is how do you learn the correct pronunciation? Well, it's up to you, it's up to me to look it up. <laughs> Usually, obviously, it's, it's going to be to where the brand's origin, the country of origin lies. Just be a gent about it and, and don't put others down, okay? And let it go. <laughs> and when in doubt, look it up. Okay, number 12, and I see this constantly, is saying, oh, I'm really into horology, right? I see this on Instagram a lot. And you look at their page and it's nothing but watches, but yet um, there's no mention of Tompion or Harrison or the great astrolabes of the, of the Middle East or, um, I don't know, Aztec calendars. Horology is an ancient, ancient thing. Watches is only a tiny part of that story, guys. Don't 
be afraid to go deeper because horology at the end of the day is the study of time. It's the keeping of hours, right? That's the etymology of the word. The other day I fell down the rabbit hole of uh, Christian uh, Heren. I'm trying my best, but the Dutch inventor finding out about his early innovations, not only as in horology, but as a scientific um, innovator as well. It was fascinating. There's so much to learn. Don't, don't limit yourself, guys. There's watch enthusiasts and then there's serious horologists, okay? It's a very, very different thing. It's a, there's a big wide world of amazing things to discover and learn out there. Water clocks in ancient Greece or, I don't know, um, Harrison's chronometers or Kendall's chronometers, all, all of that. It gives you a better understanding and a better appreciation about these things on our wrist. It really does. What can make me feel this way? Number 13, not everything you read in forums is correct. I personally have made uh, many errors in my videos um, over the years. Unfortunately, that's, it's, it's gonna happen, right? The thing is with forums is there's many differing opinions. People are biased or have their own agendas. So just be wary of that. If you're researching something I always try and find um, several sources to uh, corroborate a story or a fact. Um, so double check. Talking about my girl. Okay, number 14, and I see this all the time, especially in this video, saying, oh, that's not horology because it's quartz, or that's not horology because it's I don't know, an affordable watch, a cheap watch, right? People are getting confused with marketing, with the luxury myth we discussed in the Danny Wellington video re recently. One watch doesn't have more horology than another because it's quartz and the other's mechanical. No, horology is the study, the keeping of hours, okay? <laughs> okay, let's not get too pretentious with it. Let's keep it real, let's keep it grounded. A quartz watch, even a fake watch, it's still part of the story of horology. Anything that keeps time, from a, where is it, up there, from an obelisk casting a shadow in the sands of ancient Egypt to a quartz watch. It's horology, okay? Go on, run! Get those pesky humans. Okay, number 15, and that is, a lot of people out there, they, they don't realize how difficult it is making a watch. They, they tend to think it's a lot easier than it actually is. Even making the most elementary watches is challenging. There's so many different variables at play from the tolerances of materials. You've really got to know your movements. You've really got to be able to financially make it viable. Understanding the expertise of the watchmakers, the different techniques involved. And this is something I've really realized, especially in I've toured about six or seven watch factories in Switzerland. This is something that I really didn't understand until I saw every single process of manufacturing. Guys, you've got to give them um, the credit they deserve, uh, especially the micro brand guys, you know, because it's tough. Pesky vectors. Okay, number 16, and we, we discussed this recently in the Daniel Wellington video, and that is uh, fashion vloggers, fashion bloggers, fashion blogger, I'm <laughs> making it, fashion bloggers, um, influencers, sorry, I'm doing a lot of air quotes there, I apologize, style gurus, however you, you, you wanna, you call them, right? They tend to push the fashion watches, the, a lot of these horrifically badly made watches that are vastly overpriced. But in real life, they wear nothing but luxury watches. I've seen it and they don't even hide it that well. Practice what you preach, you know? it's. Come on, I mean, <laughs> the less said the better, but it is a big deception I see constantly. 17, and unfortunately this is not exclusive just to the watch world, but, um, and I see this, especially with magazines, publications, blogs, that kind of stuff, uh, and sometimes YouTube channels as well, is that they are beholden to their advertisers. There's a very good reason why I don't really follow many watch magazines, uh, with a few exceptions. I think Watch Time is one of the best, and 
is still has that journalistic integrity you know they're fair and that's that's the problem here is that uh, when a magazine is sponsored by a certain brand and then they have to review that brand's watch and they get a glowing review or the review is merely just echoing the, the specifications and not there's you know there's no veracity there's no verisimilitude there's no believability in there and it's a real real problem in the worst case scenario the magazine is merely a front or trying to promote their own watch store. They're not actually there to give any real journalism. And it's sad. It's the, one of the biggest deceptions, and I think it, it, it's, it's a problem. Uh, like I said, it's not exclusive to watches. It's with pretty much anything these days. <laughs> and actually, that leads in beautifully to point number 18, and that is when watch dealers or watch sellers review watches how can it you call it a review it's it's just in my opinion uh just like the previous point it, it lacks any kind of um veracity to it it's going to be biased it's merely there as promotion for their watch stores so you know i have a big issue with that when i did my special edition watches like the catalina and the squale i did i didn't call them reviews i merely presented the watch and in fact this time with the catalina i i didn't even do a video on it i merely announced it was gonna because i i have to stick to my code <laughs> Okay, 19, and this is unfortunately something that does happen um, on YouTube as well, and that is when uh, watch sellers or watch dealers will they'll start to hype up a brand. A perfect example is Universal Genève, right? But then what they do is they stockpile. This has happened, this happened years ago. Nobody was interested in Universal Genève. You can still pick them up relatively affordable. I, I picked up a beautiful thin manual wine dress watch for 200 bucks from Japan only like a year or so ago. But anyway, they'll stockpile the watches. Then suddenly they'll post articles and things hyping them up. Sure enough, it will inflate the price. Desirability will increase. And what do you see? Suddenly they're selling it in their store. It's, I mean... I guess the oldest trick in the book, and I know what some of you are going to say, oh, what about the TGV tax, right? Well, guys, I'm not stockpiling <laughs> Universal Genevs to sell them. I'm not stockpiling Flightmasters, the Sega Flightmaster or SKXs. I couldn't care less. What I do is merely, I make videos about things I love, right? I shine a spotlight, my little the urban gentry, the little spotlight that it is. All I'm merely doing is highlighting the fact that the Flightmaster is a cracking watch. I bought mine for $120 used years ago, right? They're still affordable. They're, okay, yeah, they're creeping up 300, 400 now, right? But that's because you guys out there have realized how amazing they are. That's real, okay? It's vastly different to what some of these watch dealers and publications do. Anyway, moving on. Number 20, a nice, nice point to end on, is when people say, oh, you can't be into horology uh, because you have uh, an inexpensive watch. Or you can only be in horology if you have a luxury watch, right? That goes back to the luxury watch myth that we discussed in the Dallin Wellington, um, the end of the Dallin Wellington review. It doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't, it's not what you own. It's not about the possessions. It's about enjoyment. It's about having the open mind and, and willingness to learn about this amazing hobby, okay? I have more admiration and respect for a person that is open-minded, that is courteous and willing to learn than I have somebody that has a million Pateks and a million Rolexes and has a snobby attitude. It's how you treat people, guys. And horology is open for everyone. It belongs to everyone. It's part of human history and civilization, okay? You know what? That's a great way to use, I'll, I'll leave a link up there, the video I did on 10 ways to enjoy this hobby more. If you haven't seen it, it really is the fundamental, the core beliefs, the code of the, the urban gentry and why I started this um, channel. And a lot of the OGs, the original gentry out there, um, 
you know, are in that way of thinking. And shout out to all of you guys. At the end of the day, let's not forget, not everybody can afford luxury watches. But doesn't mean you cannot enjoy this, this hobby. It's for anybody. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Um, please do share your um, biggest misconceptions, deceptions that you think uh, are prevalent in the watch world in the comments below. So thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, guys, ciao. This is a public service reminder for the good gentry. Please follow us on Instagram, join the Facebook UGWC group and click on the bell to keep notified of new videos. Don't forget to keep it positive, keep it gentry, onwards and upwards. Thank you.